Oh. Oh my gosh. It's the morning. It's Sunday. It's kids' church time. Oh my gosh. I am so excited. We have such an amazing day planned. We're going to have a memory verse moment our last Sunday with this new memory verse. So cool. We're going to talk about the last part of our verse and what it means to be an example through your purity. And then we're going to have an amazing family small group time with the Far Parsons. So uh, let's get this day started. Come on. Let's get to it. Hey there. Can you guys believe that it is the last week of this memory verse? This month has flown by so fast, and I know so many of you know the memory verse, which is so exciting to me, especially because this one has been so long, super long. So, let's read it together. But uh, I think I'm gonna test your knowledge on this one, because it is so long. So, I'm gonna read the memory verse. I might leave out a few words, so uh, I need you to help me. Think you can do it? I know you can do it. You'll, you're gonna like it. Let's go. All right, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, there you go, that's right, and your purity. Yes. Great job, guys. I'm so excited. You guys are absolutely amazing. Round of applause. Yes. So, uh, I'm, I think it's time for me to go make some coffee. Let's go do that and let's, uh, let's keep talking. All right, guys, I am here with my baby Yoda shirt. It's time to get some coffee, but while we're doing that, let's talk about our memory verse. So we've been talking this whole month about how to be an example through all of these different things that are talked about in our memory verse, from our lives to what we say, our faith. And this week we're talking about what it's like to be an example through your purity. And you know, it's kind of a weird, a weird word that you don't hear us talk about a lot, but it kind of, it comes from the word pure. And it's kind of, oh, hang on. <laughs> Hold the phone. What is this? <laughs> What's in my coffee mug? Oh no! Ew. Look how cute it is. But how gross it is on the inside. You know, that kind of actually makes me think about a time in the Bible huh? when Jesus was talking to this group of people and they called themselves God followers. They thought they were so cool and they did all of the right things, but they made up all of these rules. And they said, if I could just do this, and if I just do this, and if I just do that, if I complete all of the things, check all the things off the list, then I am such a good person. Like from the outside, they looked great. But Jesus was telling them, no, it doesn't matter what you look like on the outside because you can still look disgusting, ew, <gasps> on the inside. And that's not what it is to follow God. That's not what it is to live a pure life. So what do we do? How do we live a pure life? All right, now when we're thinking about this question, we know the answer isn't to, to just check a bunch of things off of a list because we established that doesn't necessarily do anything to clean our hearts, what? but instead, we know that there are things in the Bible that God has told us to do. If you look at the Ten Commandments, you know, it says don't lie, don't cheat, don't have any idols. But it's not just about following a list of rules. It's about being in relationship with God and doing what he wants us to do. Because it's one thing if I just do a bunch of things because I think that's what I'm supposed to do. But that's not always the best thing because huh? it's so different if I know my parents love me so, so much, instead of doing my chores because I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to do this, otherwise they're gonna be mad at me. But if I know, wow, my parents love me so much and they've put these rules in place so that I stay safe and so that I stay clean and I don't have a room full of bugs with all of my dirty laundry or my dirty dishes, but no, they love me. 
And that's exactly what it's like with God. He's given us all of these different things to help us stay pure inside of our hearts so that we don't look like this, Whoa. but we can be in close relationship with him. It's kind of like, not like coffee. You know, it's kind of like gold. Gold looks really cool, right? It's really shiny, it's really pretty, but it doesn't actually start off that way. They have to go through this refinement process is what they call it. And they actually have to melt down the gold and get all of the dirt out of it. It's kind of like if you skim things, if you ever like went hunting for really cool rocks and you kind of had to like wash off the rocks and find the really cool ones, the really pretty and colorful ones. It's like that with gold. They actually have to scoop out and all of the impurities while this metal is melted down so that when it hardens back up again, it looks so cool, it looks pretty, just like we think of with gold. And that's exactly what it's like for us and God, is that he has made all of these things, he made the 10 commandments because he knows that he wants us to live a full life, that the Bible says that Jesus came to give us life and life to the full, and he knows that we can't do that if we have all of this sin in our lives and all of this dirt and all of this ickiness inside of our hearts. That's not what he wants for us. So he said, I want you to be pure. I want you to be holy like I am holy. And it kind of goes back to that, uh, that conversation we had about sanctification last month, that it's the small little steps that we take to become more like Jesus, but it's all because he wants to be in relationship with us. And as he takes out those things in our lives that are keeping us from being in a close relationship with him that might hurt us, because we know that there are consequences to our sin. We know that if we lie, we're gonna get in trouble and different things like that. As he's taking all of those different things out of us, we are living more and more like him. We are living our lives with purity and that can be an example to all of the other people around us. And I think that is so amazing. All right, let's pray. God, thank you so much for today and thank you for how much you love us and you want to be in relationship with us. God, that is just so special to me that you sent your son to die for us. And not only that, but you want to continue to be in relationship with us. You want to draw us closer and closer to you. So God, I ask that you please show us anything that's in our hearts that might make us look like the inside of that dirty cup. God, that we want to be close to you. We want you to take those things out of our hearts that we can draw closer to you. So I just ask that you would show us our sin, you would help us to overcome it, God, and that you would help us to lead each other and, and ex be an example in our purity. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, guys, so if we do some uh, movie magic here, da -da 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 -da. Ah! look at our cup, look how clean and cute it is, and now I can use it for my coffee. I am so excited for that. But that's not exactly how it happens in real life, right? No. Like we talked about, it's those little steps that make us more and more like Jesus. And I love that so much. And my favorite part is that so many of you are already doing this. So many of you are so young, but still being an example to the people who are around you, whether that's your parents or your friends or your grandparents or all of the kids who are in nursery who are watching you and looking up to you. So let's go over to our family small group time with the Far Quarsons, but stay tuned because one of the big steps that a lot of you have taken recently is getting baptized. And it's been amazing. We've had over 20 kids from ages like seven to all the way through middle school have gotten baptized in like the last couple of weeks, the last month, and that is amazing. So let's head over to our family small group time, but stay tuned so that you can see some of these really cool baptisms. Hi, we're the Farkinson family. I'm Joanne. I'm Anaya. I'm Andrew. And this is Finn. And it's teacher time. On your mark, get set, go! 
You can do it, Mommy. I'm Daddy. Aya, what would you like to drink? Pure water or dirty water? Clean water. Clean water. What about you, Elijah? Clean. Probably clean. What about you, Zamira? Clean. Yeah? Well. Yeah. That's the dirty water. Nobody wants to drink this. Right? Oh, uh, we, we rather drink clean water. So, Maya, do you think Jesus wants us to live like him or like everyone else? Like him. Because Jesus is perfect, and sometimes people don't do really good things. An example to live like him is like showing love, mm -hmm. even if someone likes a toy, or, you know, like you can't just hit them and throw a tension. You could, like, just. Yeah, I don't like that they forgive you, they just Right, right. What about you, Keelan? Do you think Jesus wants us to live like him or like everyone else? Like him. Right? Live like him. Because if we live like Jesus, everyone's going to wonder, ooh, why are we so nice? Or why are we so gentle? Why are we so loving? And it will be much easier to form that relationship with them and be able to let them know who Jesus is. Once they see how nice you are, they're going to want to know more about Jesus. Right? How can we keep our eyes and our minds pure and our hearts loving Jesus? Um, by keeping your mind pure, you could um, repent and think positive because thinking positive makes you think good things, right? And not like bad things because that can make you do bad things. Mm -hmm. That's good. What about you, Keelan? Do you know? Well, a way that we can keep our our eyes pure. <laughs> is by watching the right things. So like finding things that bring us closer to Jesus. Like for example, like listening to um, YouTube, not YouTube, like going on YouTube and watching gospel music. That's a way that you can keep your eyes peeled and it also brings you closer to Jesus. All right, can we get a what, what? Yes, that was an amazing family small group time. Thank you so much to Anaya and her family. And now, as promised, drum, drum roll please. We have some baptisms to watch. So let's go do that and I'll see you guys at church. Bye. So I just have to say my parents are here and it's so awesome because this is a generation that's now passed on to the third generation and it's so exciting to see because of the faith that my parents had. They had more of a rough time with me because they had to take me out of the country before that I could get the change that I needed but he's getting the change right here. Baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Anything you want to say? Um, I'm doing this because I'm a Christian. And I want people to know I am. Yeah. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're super excited for Lena and Audrey like, just to see how much they've grown and come to know Jesus as the Father, and the Son, that. and the Holy Spirit. Raise oh, it in <laughs> Baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and raise you. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Raise you. Emma, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And raise sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. The Son and the Holy Spirit and raise you. Yeah. Yeah. 
Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Raise it again! Oh, yeah. oh, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise you. I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.